In 1985, archaeologists discovered a house beneath a Toronto school playground. Historical records that date back to 1834 reveal it was the home of Thornton and Lucy Blackburn, freedom seekers, entrepreneurs, and philanthropists once lost to history. Their story begins in Kentucky. Thornton Blackburn was born into enslavement in Kentucky. At 19, he met and fell in love with Ruthie, and the couple decided to escape. They secured forged papers identifying them as free African Americans and found passage on a steamboat, becoming passengers on the clandestine network known as the Underground Railroad. The Underground Railroad used train-related terminology like passengers and ticket agents to operate in secret and avoid suspicion from outsiders. Conductors guided passengers to safe houses known as stations en route to their final stop or terminus. Visual cues like lit candles and windows helped identify safe houses and kept slaveholders and the public in the dark. The American Fugitive Slave Act of 1793 gave slaveholders legal backing to recover escaped enslaved persons across the country. That put the freedom of black Americans in perpetual danger. While citizens were encouraged to participate in enforcing the act, some states chose not to enforce it. That same year, spurred by the violent sale of Chloe Cooley, an enslaved woman in Niagara, Upper Canada's Lieutenant Governor John Graves Simcoe and Attorney General John White introduced the Act to Limit Slavery in Upper Canada. Since there was opposition to abolition within the legislature, the Act used a gradual approach to abolish enslavement in Upper Canada. But the Blackburns hadn't made it to safety in Canada yet. Thornton and Ruthie traveled covertly during the day using their forged free papers and made their way to the free state of Michigan. While living freely in Detroit, Thornton encountered an old supervisor from Kentucky who recognized him and reported the Blackburns down south. The Blackburns' old enslavers approached the county sheriff who arrested the couple in June 1833 under the Fugitive Slave Act. Tried in open court, they were sentenced to return to enslavement in Kentucky. Word of the Blackburns' arrest spread like wildfire. Hundreds came to protest their sentence. The night before their forced return to Kentucky, two women freed Ruthie from jail. The next morning, as Thornton was led away, 200 armed men and women came to his rescue. He and seven rescuers followed Ruthie to Upper Canada. The resulting chaos and violence became known as the Blackburn Riots of 1833 which had long-lasting effects for the Black community in Detroit. In Upper Canada, the Blackburns and their party were detained at the request of the mayor of Detroit for attempted murder and inciting civil unrest. The governor of Michigan demanded they be extradited back to America, where they would be tried and likely sent back into enslavement. However, earlier that year, the Fugitive Offenders Act of 1833 had been passed in Upper Canada. The act listed crimes for which one could be extradited and gave the lieutenant governor the final word. The Blackburns were declared not guilty of any charge included in the act. As the lieutenant governor was unwilling to send them back to enslavement, the Blackburns were released. This was the first recorded case of escaped enslaved people tried under the Fugitive Offenders Act in Upper Canada. Although later cases sometimes had different outcomes, the Blackburns case helped popularize Upper Canada as the final terminus of the Underground Railroad. Further legal developments on both sides of the border cemented this status. The Blackburns were two of an estimated 30 to 40,000 African Americans who escaped north to freedom in the 1800s. Thornton even used the Underground Railroad again to rescue his mother and bring her to Canada. The Blackburns established themselves in Toronto. Ruthie changed her name to Lucy to mark her freedom, and the couple reunited with Thornton's brother, Alfred. They were free, but Upper Canada was not the promised utopia. Racist violence, segregation, and discrimination made life difficult for Black Canadians. But the community was built on a strong sense of shared experiences, group identity, a support network provided by churches and other institutions, and a mutual reliance that offered refuge against white discrimination. Thornton found a job as a waiter at Osgood Hall, where he worked for several years. He eventually heard about the new use of English hackney cabs in Montreal, and in 1837 he decided to start his own taxi company in Toronto. 
Thornton and Lucy ordered a cab built, painted it red and yellow, and named it The City. The city soon became a popular transit option and familiar sight as Upper Canada's first taxi business. Thanks to their business, Thornton and Lucy's finances grew. They were respected in the community and worked hard to help fellow freedom seekers. They built or purchased several homes and provided inexpensive lodging for new arrivals from the Underground Railroad. They donated to several community projects and joined protests against racial discrimination. Thornton was an active member of several associations that aimed to improve life for the Black community. He was one of Toronto's representatives at the North American Convention of Colored Freemen in 1851, attended by other prominent Black Canadians such as Henry Bibb and Marianne Shad Carey. Thornton and Lucy retired in the 1860s. Thornton passed away in 1890 and Lucy in 1895. They were buried next to acquaintance and fellow abolitionist George Brown. Their legacy of generosity, resilience, and innovation continued to shape the city of Toronto. The Blackburns and their remarkable journey through the Underground Railroad, their many accomplishments, and their philanthropy were lost to history for nearly a hundred years. The Blackburns did not leave any written records, nor are there existing photos of the pair. Archaeologists discovered records of their home, leading to an excavation of the schoolyard in 1985 and a rediscovery of their lives. The excavation became the first underground railroad site dug in Canada. The Blackburns were designated Persons of National Historic Significance in 1999, and plaques were erected in their honour in Toronto and in Louisville, Kentucky. This marked the first ever binational commemoration of a single journey on the Underground Railroad.